like, what is this guy talking about? Because yeah, he told me you can never snowboard again. My heart just sank. As, as soon as I saw it, I had a very good feeling of what it was. It's sad <laughs> that she can't continue. Already a two-time X Games medalist, Caitlin Farrington became a household name in 2014 when she unexpectedly won the gold medal in women's halfpipe in Sochi. I feel like I've worked my butt off to get there and I walked away with the gold medal. It just feels like a dream now. In October 2014, Caitlin traveled to Austria where her career and life would change forever. Over a small handmade jump, Caitlin caught her heel edge and lost control. Ended up landing and lost all the feeling in my body and just kind of, and it was kind of like a two minute thing where I just lost all the feeling to my toes and just had to lay there and wait for it to kind of come back and I was kind of freaking out like, help, like I definitely need help. After lying on the snow, paralyzed from the neck down for two minutes, Caitlin was able to stand and walk, but numbness in her shoulders persisted. She would go for an MRI and see numerous doctors who all delivered the same news. Congenital spinal stenosis, and that means that her cervical spine is too narrow and it's something she was born with. It's not genetic, it didn't come from her parents, it's just kind of bad luck that she was born with that. Hearing it from Dr. Hackett was the moment that I was like, this is real, like, okay, I can't compete in snowboarding. Because I think Hackett was like, Caitlin, I know you've been snowboarding, but you cannot get in another half pipe again. From about this level into down about here, the spinal cord is really, really, really tight and there's barely any room for a little bit of fluid to get behind it and a little bit of fluid to get in front. And so that's what we call stenosis, where it's tight. As these vertebrae move, there's no room for here for play. The danger is that if her neck moves too far in this area here, that spinal cord will get pinched and it will be damaged and that could be permanent. I guess my main question is, is if she sneezes too hard, you know, it's, you know, tell me, you know, the severity of it. The risk of continuing to snowboard at that level in the half pipe is just too high. The next time she might get paralyzed and it might not last for two minutes. It might last for a long, long time. So he was explaining and he said basically no bungee jumping, no jumping out of airplanes, keeping both feet on the ground, no more pipe. It's one of those things that a lot of doctors, they said that I'm really lucky that I stood up after my injury because some people don't. Wow, I can imagine her being a paraplegic. So hopefully, you know, she'll keep all this in the back of her mind, I'm sure, and remember to try to keep both feet on the ground or land softly. <laughs> I reminded her of what that felt like when she was lying in the bottom of the pipe in Austria. I said, Caitlin, you remember what that felt like not to be able to feel your arms and legs? And like, that's the risk. That's why we can't do this anymore. I thought I was way too young to hear the word retirement, but yep, I'm in retirement right now going through. So it's kind of a weird thing to process that through my mind. I went from having one of the like highest highs of my life this year to now a complete life changer that I've got to figure out what I'm going to do next, really. I can still snowboard, which I'm so thankful for because I can still do something that I love to do and I've been doing my whole life. I just have to change the, my style of it a little bit. <laughs> people have mentioned coaching. I'm not ready for that, to put up with people and try and be like, yeah, you do this because I would be a terrible coach. I think I'd be like, why don't you know, why don't you get it? <laughs> I've kind of been trying to lean towards the adventuring snowboarding, I think is the route that I'd like to try and take. I just really want to stay in the sport and continue doing it. Otherwise, I know that I'd probably just move to the beach and nobody in the snowboard world would probably ever see me again. 